Hello everyone and welcome to Epilepsy Stories. My name is Robert Fiore, your host. Today we're going to speak about SUDEP, Sudden Unexplained Death in Epilepsy. We have two special guests here, Heidi and Frank. Thank you for joining us and please tell us about your story. Thank you for having us. Um, our story started with uh, uh, our daughter's first seizure on September 12th, 2007. 2007, yeah. Um, she was at school, uh, sophomore high school, and um, I got a call that she, I was at work that she had had a seizure at school. She had never had a seizure before. Um, took me about 10 minutes to get about a half an hour drive from uh, Bristol, Connecticut to Torrington, Connecticut, where she was uh, at the hospital when I got there. They had tested her. Frank met me there, and her sister yep. was there with her. Sister was a, soft, a freshman in high school, and they had arranged for her to go be with her, you know, leave the school and be with her. Right. Um, thank you, Connecticut State Police. Um, and uh, they sent her home. They said, you know, she'll, she'll be fine. She's follow up with her pediatrician. You need to get her and see a neurologist. We don't know what caused this, um, and we got as far as the parking, the parking lot. lot, and she had another seizure in the parking lot. And this is the first time. She this never had seizures. You never knew that she had epilepsy. She just was your regular, everyday, outgoing, fun to be with kid. Correct. Kind of in retrospect, I, I wonder if she hadn't had some absence seizures um, that we just didn't even pick up on because we have no family history. We had no reason to, to look for it. But, you know, she was a kid. You, sometimes yes. they space <laughs> out. I don't know. Some, some perhaps there was something that had happened. Um, before that. Um, but when she had the second seizure in the parking lot of the hospital, they transferred her to Connecticut Children's Medical Center, um, admitted her and did testing as an inpatient. Um, the following day on September 13th, 2007, she was diagnosed with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Okay. And she was put on Keppra and told to take her meds and get plenty of sleep and eat and do what she had needed to do and she'd be okay and it, she probably wouldn't be seizure free but hopefully we could control the seizures and to just follow up um, which was our plan she was on an increasing dose of Keppra. Just the Keppra alone nothing else? Nothing else. And Keppra at that time. Right. I think they were still trying to uh, so what it, what medicines would work with her so yep. it, it was still a, a learning process for all of us at that point. Oh naturally. They had oh. told us that um, they hoped that Kepra would work because given that she was a 15-year-old girl, uh, if Kepra worked, Kepra didn't cross to the through the placenta. If she did decide to have children later, they wouldn't have to change her medication. So it was a good medication to start on for a 15-year-old for a girl. Yeah. I, I myself am on Kepra, Lamecto, and Phenobar, but Kepra is... Uh, has been out there for a while. It's not antique like phenobarbital or something. So many people have had the great effects from it. Correct. So after that. Well, after that, she uh, she came home with me. Home for not even a week. And she had had another seizure after school in our driveway. Went to the emergency room. Uh, Haiti came over at that point. Uh, at that time, we were living up in Winston. They sent her home, came home, she was exhausted, and we said our goodnight, she went to bed and went to wake her up for school the next morning. And that's when I found, found her. At some point during the night she had passed away. Yeah. No, it's, it's something that when we first interacted years ago, it was hard to swallow and uh, understand what, uh, what goes through someone. And this is one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to do this interview. As, as emotional as it is, the word is not th out there enough about suit up, uh, one of the many types of epilepsy. And uh, I have to bring this up. There's uh, something bittersweet here. There's no suit up society here in America. The one that we all know of is up in Canada. And we'd like to let people know that if you're interested in suit up, if you know people with suit up, you want to learn about suit up, try to interact with some professional and s perhaps start a nonprofit organization or at least get a website going to inform people about it. Yeah, it's um, it's not something that we had even heard was 
we just were told she was going to be fine. She would have seizures, and that she, it was never even something that was discussed. It was kind of later we went, and of course, both of us are Googling, yeah. and Kim's Googling, and bef you know that week that we had between um, her date of diagnosis and her date of death, um, Kim had already found the National Walk in, in uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah. She couldn't wait to do that. She wanted to do Sharon's Walk. She wanted, uh, she's like, when can I get my dog? She's, she's <laughs> just that is so typical of She had of already Kim. contacted the Connecticut Epilepsy Foundation by before we even got to the hospital the yeah. next day while she was in Children's. Yeah. And it was amazing. She was ready to go on that with as much enthusiasm as she did for Relay for Life. Yeah, but it, 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 it's typical of a kid. You know how they are. They, just, they, they don't have time to sit around. They want to learn about something and, you know, be informed about it. Exactly. And it's amazing that, uh, you know, she was a tough cookie. I, I'm yeah. sad we, uh, we never met, but you could tell from everything that we've spoken about over the years yeah. that she really wanted to get involved with it, learn about it. And she was the type of person that would help other people. Kim did a, she, she did more volunteer work than Frank and I had time to drive her to places. <laughs> um, in addition to volunteering at Bristol Hospital, which is, this photo is um, has her volunteer pin uh, from Bristol Hospital where I work, um, she was a uh, co-leader of two DAISY troops. She was a Sunday school teacher. She was on the committee and um, a team member th for the American Cancer Society Relay for Life uh, in Northwest Hills, um, which incidentally gives an award in her honor every here at the Relay, yeah. um, a, a Youth Leadership Award. Um, they, we gave out the third, fourth this year, fourth annual, um, which is awesome yeah, to give fourth. a Kimberly Piercy Award. And um, Frank and I go <laughs> up there and get to give it to some amazing kids who kind of carry on the kind of work that she she wanted to do. They're, they're, it means a lot to them to, to volunteer, and not just for the American Cancer Society and their community as a right. whole, which was, it was what Kim was about. Yeah. She was, uh, she wanted to make this place a better place. Yeah. Well, she picked it up from the both of you. We know that. So thank uh, you. Oh, you're welcome. <coughs> it's, uh, it's amazing. A and you know, kids are fascinating. How they pick up on things and how they want to help each other, other people out there, because they know what it's like to live with something, and they're not going to sit and moan about it. They're going to help other people with it. Absolutely. And so, Frank, you had mentioned earlier that you're going to be taking a trip pretty soon for a walk? Um, yeah. September 23rd is the second annual Chelsea Hus Hutchinson Foundation Sudep Awareness Walk. Um, it's in Colorado, just outside Denver. This year they're also doing one just outside of Philadelphia. Me and my wife Tammy will be flying out there for, for that this year to show support for another family who lost their teenage daughter the same way we did. Yeah. No, that's, uh, it's important that the word gets out and uh, more, more is done about this. There's uh, different events that they've had uh, in this past year. Our organization had a, an event called Strike Out Epilepsy. And what we decided to do, we're, we're looking to help fund people who need a service dog. Naturally, uh, someone with epilepsy that needs a service dog, we're going to interact with them their families and their doctor and you know there's that entire thing that you have to go through you just don't walk them and say hi you need a service dog you know it's off the shelf. You can tell Kim that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, but it's amazing. It, it's, it's amazing. Well, at least what I find amazing is right now in the states there is nothing. Nothing on a national or even a regional level other than organizations such as, as the one I just spoke of, Chelsea Hutchinson right, Chelsea Foundation, Hutchinson, yeah. that that deal with SUDEP. Um, you have SUDEP Aware in Canada, would, which is a good, a good uh, organization, and you also have one in England, um, Epilepsy Bereaved. Right. But there's nothing here in the states for this, and I, I find that totally amazing that nothing has has come about this. Now, Cure uh, the Citizens United for Research, research. epilepsy, yeah. They have some stuff that they have done. They, they founded some research uh, and grants, but it, it's strange to me, at least, that there's nothing to help the people that have gone through what we have. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's there's no support there there's almost no education uh, except for the last few years where it just may be me noticing it more because I have gone through this right and, and seeing it more where I wouldn't have paid attention to it before it, it, I just find it amazing that there's nothing here and hopefully somebody soon will take that torch and run well you know since the two of us first interacted over three years ago and then finally met two years ago that uh, never I never heard of it and as much as I research and hear about things for epilepsy so yeah it is not out there enough and we need to make people aware about it so if anyone out there is hearing this and want to learn about that please any epilepsy organization where you live contact them or just google SUDEP and see what you can learn about it it's paramount that the word gets out about this absolutely um, from, from what we've learned since uh, some of the greatest risk factors for SUDEP is not taking your meds and not taking your meds when you're supposed to take your meds so keeping your levels at a correct level um, and also perhaps some underlying um, heart condition that uh, was not picked up on that you could probably live all your life with um, but I would think that you know, as a parent, if I had to go through it again, if one of my other children were diagnosed with epilepsy, I would go to their pediatrician and beg for an EKG or just some kind of little, just a little cardiac workup and let's see if there's anything that's going on that nothing showed up with Kim. We were told nothing. We were told that there was nothing that um, caused this, but I guess, you know, what What have we got to lose? It's an EKG. It's a couple right. hundred dollar test. It's not, you're not talking about anything life shattering. Let's let's just make sure that there's nothing um, nothing else going on. Well, you can't set a price on a person's life. Y correct, no. correct. That's, that's yeah. it.